What's up guys, H Masters here, today doing a LEGO Marvel Super Heroes review. This time it's on the LEGO Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, the Milano vs. the Obelisk. This set contains 460 pieces and the ages are 7 to 14. Item number is 76081. And then there are 4 minifigures and then 1 micro figure in the set. In the front of the box you can just see the Milano actually just fighting the Obelisk. And then on the back you can just see all of the features of the set. Fully complete, you can see the set comes with the Milano itself, the Obelisk, and the four and a half minifigures. Although this is not LEGO's first time making a Milano, I still think that this is a very solid set here. There are obviously some changes between this Milano and the last Milano. For example, this color scheme is a blue and orange versus last time with the blue and yellow, which I'm personally fine with the blue and orange, you know, it is a little bit more accurate, which is, you know, of course the main thing you want to get here with a set like this. But let's go ahead and take a look at the Milano, starting with the cockpit. The Milano has a fairly large cockpit as you can see here, it has this just just giant sort of just canopy piece which is printed and then you can open it up like this. You can see there's a lot of space inside for you to put a minifigure. You can see in the back there there is a printed piece and then there's two stickered pieces on each side where you can put some minifigures. And you can actually fit every single minifigure that comes in this set in the Milano all at once. However, you do have to remove all of the accessories that come with them. And you can even get Groot inside since Groot is so small you can just kind of throw them on top. And then you can see how that looks from a front angle and a side angle. You just see how it looks like. You can see people at all angles sort of like piloting and flying. It's just a cool overall look. And then of course you can just simply close the cockpit back up like this. You can also see this nose section. They did a pretty good job here using their stickers. The stickers actually in this case in my opinion feel pretty necessary just because the way it helps transition here you can see how they use a sticker right here to transition from the orange to the blue versus just a blue tile piece there and you can also see how they transition from the more silverish gray here this like metal section if you will and then it goes into the orange color which is pretty nice as you move further along the top of the ship here you can see there are two stud shooters on either side so what would you do is, you know, very simply, you would just push it down and then the stud will fire out. And you know, that goes a pretty good distance and they are fairly accurate and go straight. And then you do have some extra studs in the set as per usual. You can also see back here just a bunch of nice engine detailing, which just looks really good and it's just a good thing. And of course that is done using stickers, no print to pieces, unfortunately. Each wing is a little bit different. On this side you have the Milano logo over here, and on the other side you have a red circular tile piece with a blue sticker on top of it. And then you can see at the wing tips they're actually different from last time. Last time they were fully built up using giant Techni pieces, but now they're fully system. And since these are on mixel ball joints, they are you know independable, you can move them around, although you are a little bit limited because this is about how far you can go back and then it'll just fall off because of the limitation of the ball joint. However, I don't find that too big of a deal because you still have a lot of just good angles you can get here. I mean, you can pretty much do whatever you want. There's small limitations, but you can get like something crazy like that that's completely different. If you want, you can have this just going out all over the place. Get a thing like that. You know, you have good options here with what you can do and there's just some nice stuff there. And lastly, on each side, there is this little axle sticking out. Now what you do is that you push it, and two bombs, as you can see, these are the little bombs. They're fairly simple, just little small assemblies. They will drop down. And you can see from the underside how that looks. It's a small little function. It works well, and it's pretty nice to have in there. And it's just one of those little things that add extra playability to the set. And it's integrated very well. The colors work pretty well because it is a gray axle, which goes well with just the overall color scheme. Another thing I want to quickly note about these wings is that the way these are attached here, if you don't have it specifically aligned, it won't be fully attached. So you have to make sure because you see how they are attached with this piece. If you don't have it specifically aligned, it won't be fully connected and then it will easily fall off, which can be annoying. And then these are also, of course, you know, rotatable, so you can sort of pretend that things are flying around as you fly it around. 
the back of the Milano is actually a lot better looking than you expect. The whole thing looks really cool. The only issues I have is that you can see there are some open Technic holes on the side. But other than that, I think the whole thing looks really cool. These little tips on the side, of course, are rotatable because they're on a Mixel ball joint. So you can have those pretty much going all over the place. And you can also see how they use a sticker here to have that orange there along with the blue. These little thin things on the side are also movable. They are on ratchet joints though, so they aren't as movable as the ball joint. But you can move them all the way down to here and you can just move them back up. You know, it's a very cool stuff. And then you can also see a little thruster here along with that engine detailing. And the last thing I want to show off here is that there is a little bit of a landing platform for the Milano here, but it's actually very well integrated into the set, whereas the only way you're going to be able to see it is if you're looking all the way underneath from this angle, as you can see right now. But unless if you're really, really looking for it, it's completely hidden from pretty much all angles, and most of the time you're never going to see it unless, of course, you're looking at a angle you know that would be underneath it or you're specifically looking for that part. I was actually pleasantly surprised by the obelisk. It's a very small thing and when I looked at the pictures of it I thought it just be kind of a little thing that's there but it actually has a lot of cool features to it and it actually adds a lot of playability to the set. So taking a look at it, the first thing I want to show off is that this entire mouse section does chomp like that so you can sort of put a minifigure inside since this is a studded surface and you can chomp and pretend to be like eating them. And there's also some pretty nice details on this like head section. You can see on the one side there is an eye here which is a printed piece and then on the other side this is a sticker which adds a little bit of some scaling sort of texture there which just looks nice. But that's not really the main feature of this. The main feature here is of course, you know, you can tell there's there's some gears that adds a little bit of a hint. So basically what you do though, is you would turn the head and then these tentacle like things would be moving. And you could sort of like pretend to be grabbing at the Milano or you could be grabbing at the minifigure and throwing them aside to be like eating them up or something. And it's something that's just, it's a small thing, but it's really cool and adds a lot of playability to it. But you have to be careful because it is a little bit restricted. You can't just move in one direction because you'll see right here, these two pieces collide. And then after that, you cannot move it anymore. So you gotta be going in two separate directions, which is a little bit unfortunate, but it's nothing too bad. This specific tentacle is on a Mixel ball joint. So this one's relatively poseable and they all are poseable. You know, you can move them like this or these little tips here on some of them you can move it like this so you get a little bit of different you know like expression almost there and just the whole thing is relatively well done there's also some pretty nice details on the stand here like when you see for example there's a sticker right here and there's also a sticker here and then if you go to the other side you can see another one over there although unfortunately there's nothing over here it's just kind of bare there so you know ideally you would just kind of have it displayed at this sort of angle or like that this set comes with four and a half minifigures and they are as follows, Baby Groot, Star-Lord, Gamora, Drax, and Nebula. Removing all of their accessories here, you can get a better look at all of their prints. And looking at the back, you can also see some pretty nice prints. Removing Star-Lord's and Gamora's hair pieces, you can see some alternate faces. And Star-Lord actually comes with a completely different hair piece. Drax also has some pretty nice printing on his arms as well and you can see a better look at Baby Groot. The Milano vs. the Obelisk was actually a lot better than I expected it to be. When I first saw this set, I immediately assumed that it would be completely all about the Milano. It is still kind of is. The Milano is obviously the main extraction. The Milano is what a lot of people are going to be buying this set for. However, the Milano, I feel, is not as good as the original Milano that they had made before. The thing with this Milano is it's smaller, the play features aren't, at least in my opinion, as good as they could be, especially for a $50 set. I feel like there should be just a little bit more playability from the Milano itself, but that doesn't mean the Milano is bad. The Milano is actually a very, very good ship. There's, there's still a ton of playability you can get with it. But I feel the main playability is actually from the b the obelisk. The obelisk actually just adds a whole lot more playability. The ability to grab on those minifigures, pretend to sort of just be going to eat them up. It really just sets everything up and gives you a whole great scene here. In, in addition, the obelisk just it's just it's got a it's like it's one of those things where you just you didn't really see it coming, but it's just it's got so much playability, so much features. 
it's just one of those little things that are so kind of random, but at the same time, it's so good. But yeah, the minifigures also, the minifigures are also very good in this set. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure you guys will correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe every single minifigure in the set is exclusive except for Baby Group. But yeah, that's pretty much it for my review on the Milano versus the Abilisks. And once again, I do want to make sure that you guys know the Milano itself is not bad. It's just not as good as in my opinion as the original. But overall, I think if you want this set for only the Milano, I would recommend getting it unless if you already have the original Milano. If you have the original Milano, I don't see much of a point in transitioning over to this one unless if you want to have a collection of Milanos. But other than that, there's nothing else really left to say. Hope you guys enjoyed. Till next time, I'll see you guys later.